Hey, welcome to the Dark Dragon Does Math. Today we're doing um, surface area volume, surface area and volume of cones and pyramids, or as I like to say, the surface area and volume of pointy things. Um, so when I find the volume of a pointy thing, it is always one third the area of the base times the height. Um, so if it's a rectangle like this below, it'd be whatever the area of the rectangle times the height and whatever. Just divide that by three, really. Um, cone is what we're really worried about. So the area of the base of a cone is a circle. So it's one third pi r squared times the height. So that's the big one for cone. Um, and then the surface area, which I talked about where this came from. Um, the net of a cone is a circle plus its lateral surface. Its surf is kerfus, uh, lateral surface area. Um, the curved surface and so that is going to be pi r squared plus pi r l where the l stands for the slant height of the cone um, sometimes it's written as pi r times r plus l um, and I'll get into to when to use use those but these are our main equations for this little section. Um, so what is the volume of the rectangular prism? That should say pyramid. What's the volume of the rectangular pyramid? So the volume is going to be one-third base times height. So we need the base, which is 6 times 4.5. Uh, 6 times 4.5 is 27. And the height is Eight. So if I set this out, I'm going to say one third area of the base, which is 27, times the height, which is 8. So one third 27 times 8. Uh, one third of 27 is 9. 9 times 8 is 72. So this is 72 centimeters cubed because it's volume. Volume is always cubed units. If I start out with the volume, like this one, so the rectangular, man, prism again, pyramid, um, has a volume of 260 cubic inches. The base has a length of 15 and a width of 8. What is the height of the pyramid? So we know volume is equal to one third base times height. My volume is equal to 260. My base is equal to 8 times 15, right? 15 times 8, which is 120. So if I plug these two numbers in up here, I get 260 equals 1 third times 120 times the height. Uh, 260 is equal to a third of 120, which is 40 times the height, uh, divide by 40, um, and that is going to be, give me h equals, and that is 6.5, uh, and the unit is inches. All right, so basically we set it up like an equation, so, so keep that in mind. So we did the similar things with cylinders. Uh, so this is Padawan. Padawan and then me. So a cone has a height of seven centimeters and a radius of three centimeters. Find the exact volume of the cone. So let's, the volume of the cone is one third pi r squared h. One third pi r squared h. So, um, <sighs> we know that, excuse me, H is 7 and R is 3. So if we set this in, we can say the volume is equal to 1 third pi times R squared, which is 3 squared times H7. Um, and notice I did not put in 3.14 for, for pi because it said exact. So anytime I find exact numbers, 
I basically leave pi unchanged. Um, what I mean by that is I'm going to take all the numbers, 1 third, 3, and 7, do that to them. Um, so really it's just, it's 1 third is, and remember, multiplying something by 1 third is, about, is dividing by 3 technically. So I'm going to say 3 times 3 times 7 divided by 3. And what I actually get is I get 21 pi. Um, one of the threes cancels out, and it's just 3 times 7. So 21 pi is my exact volume. So that's A. That's the exact volume. It's pi is just a symbol here. Now, if I want to find my approximate volume, I do 21 times 3.14. Okay, so instead of having pi, I'm going to multiply by my approximation where 3.14 is pi. So 3.14 times 21, and that gives me... 65.9, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, um, 65.9, and that is centimeters cubed. <clears throat> if a safety cone has a height of 30 inches, so H is equal to 30, and a volume in V is equal to 2009.6, what is the radius of the safety cone? Use 3.14 for pi. Um, so I'm going to take my equation again. I'm just going to plug in the number. So first off is V. V is 2009.6 equals 1 third pi is 3.14. I do this a lot. 3.14 times, we don't know R, times H, which is 30. Um, and sometimes what I like to do is I like to go ahead and write it with my unknown in the back because it does not matter the order of which I multiply. So if I put my unknown in the back, it's easier for me to figure out what to do next. So this is just an equation, but before I can do anything, I probably want to figure out what this is right here as a number. So let's figure out what that number is. So one third of 30 is 10. So 10 times 3.14 is going to be 31.4. So 2009.6 is equal to 31.4 times r squared. Step two of solving this equation is I'm going to divide by 31.4. And so that'll cancel out. I'll be left with r squared equals 2009.6 divided by 31.4, that's actually 64. So the last step is, okay, so how do I get r by itself? Well, if I square something, I need to go backwards. The way you go backwards is, is to take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, so the square root, you can use the square root button. But what I like to do is do 64 to the power of, so the caret button, 1 half. Um, and that right there will take care of the, that'll get you your square root every time. Um, and your calculator is more likely to have that function. And we already know that the square root of 64 is 8, so r is equal to 8 inches. But it's nice to see how you find that if you have a square root of something you don't know. So r is equal to 8 inches. So again, set it up like an equation. Take all your numbers, figure out what that number is, divide by that number, and take the square root. So Padawan, Padawans, do that one. This one's you too. This one's me. So a cone has a radius of 5 centimeters and a slant height of 15. And remember I said I'd talk about that again. Remember the slant height is basically the diagonal side. How tall is that? What is the exact area of the curved surface? So remember the volume, excuse me, the surface area was the circle plus the curved surface, the lateral surface area. So I'll just say curface. Um, so, and that was pi r squared plus pi r l. So since I know r is 5 and l is 15, a is going to be the exact area of the curved surface. So if it ever says exact, I don't mess around with pi. So pi is just going to be there. Pi times 5 times 15. 
So 5 times 15 is 75. I don't want to mess with pi, so this just becomes 75 pi. So 75 centimeters squared. What is the total surface area of the cone? Find exact and approximate. So I have this for this. I want to find my circle. So that's going to be r squared. So 5 squared pi which is 25 pi. So that is my circle. To find my total, I'm going to add these two together. And I get 25 plus 75 pi, which is 100 pi. So that is my exact 100 pi centimeters squared. And my approximate. is equal to 100 times 3.14, which is 314 centimeters squared. Let that soak in. Um, a wrapper for a frozen yogurt cone has a surface area of 159 square centimeters. So. Let's go back to my equation. My, it's SA is equal to pi r squared plus pi r l. Um, the wrapper has a frozen of a frozen cone has a surface area. So I know surface area is equal to 159. The radius of the cone is 4 centimeters. R is equal to 4. Find the slant height. So I'm going to basically take this and plug in here and plug in r for all my r's and we know use 3.14 for pi. So SA is 159. So for SA is 159 times 3.14 times 4 squared plus 3.14 times 4 times L. So step one when I'm solving an equation like this is I want to figure out what these this number is. I want to figure out what this number is. So I'm going to do 4 times 3.14 and I get so 159 is equal to 12.56L plus so that was this one right here and I'm since it's 4 squared I'm going to multiply that number times 4. 50.24. So this is equal to 50.24. 3.14 times 4 is 12.56, and I still have my L. So now I can solve this equation. Start off by subtracting 50.24 from both sides. So this cancels out. 159 minus 50.24 is 108.76 is equal to. 12.56L. Step 2, divide by the 12.56. So divide by 12.56 and I get my lateral surface area, is, or excuse me, my, my slant height is equal to 8 point, I'll make that 7. 8.7 um, centimeters. Padawans can do this one and that one. And I actually have two more questions um, that I'm going to go through now. There's no more Padawan questions, but I just want you to, to get an idea of um, just a couple more examples. So a cone-shaped roof has a radius of 114 feet and a slant height of 17 feet. So it has a radius of 14 feet and a slant height of 17 feet. The roof is covered completely with glass. The cost of glass is $40 per square foot. What is the cost of covering the roof with glass? So I want to think about it. Here's a picture of the roof. Um, now, if we're covering all of this, all of that with glass, what we're not covering is actually the circle at the bottom. See, that doesn't make any sense because why, why would you do that? So if I'm fine, first off, I need to find the surface area because I'm covering it. That would be the surface area. Uh, but I don't find the bottom. So all I need is pi 
RL, the kerfus area of a of a cone. So if I'm going to find that, it's simply pi, which is 3.14 times 14 times 17. So that is 3.14 times 14 times 17. So that gives me 747.32. <clears throat> now step two, that's, this is the square feet that I'm covering. But we want to know the cost. So the, the cost is $40 per square foot. So if I have this many square feet, I would take this number and multiply it by 40 to get my money. So that number times 40 is equal to 2,000, or excuse me, 29,892.8, and we'll say 80 since it's dollars. All right. Susanna, Suzanne, is serving yogurt in a cone-shaped parfait glass. Everybody loves parfait. Parfait is layers. Um, the cone-shaped part of each glass has a height of 9 centimeters and a diameter of 7 centimeters. How many cubic centimeters of yogurt is Suzanne serving um, if she's serving three parfait glasses? Another way to think about this, if I have to serve three people this parfait, how much yogurt do I need? Um, so we have a height of 9 and we have a diameter of 7. And we're worried about cubic things. We're worried about volume. So remember, volume is equal to one third pi r squared times the height. So we are going to do one third times 3.14. So we hit, we're asked to approximate times r seven squared times the height, which is nine. And I can throw all that in at one time. I actually started pi at 3.14 times 7 squared. 7 times 7 times 9. And then I'm going to divide by 3. So instead of multiplying by 1 third, I'm just going to divide by 3 because it's essentially the exact same thing. And I get one glass has a volume of 461.58. So this is one glass. Um, centimeters cubed. I want to, Suzanne is serving three. So if we're going to do three glasses, we take this number and we multiply it by three. And I get 1,300, you can't see that, 84.74 centimeters. And that is the end of the video. Finally got through it. All right, guys. Have an awesome day. Doing your math.